Okay, I've shared mine on social media. Let me get back over here. Oh, here comes my dog. I didn't think you were in the room, Momo. You're going to have to sit down. Henry sit might down. visit, but he's quiet. Got my drink. I'm all set here. So this page. There's so many moving parts to this. And if anybody's watching live right now, we're, we are live, but we're just killing time. Well, we're just getting some things together. Stuff. Well, here, I'll, I'll treat everyone to a view of... There she is. She'll be <laughs> staring at me through the entire podcast. Okay, I have the chat open. I already fed you. What else do you want? So if you're watching on if you're watching anywhere but besides YouTube, go to YouTube and watch it there because then you can get in on the chat and ask questions or whatever you want to do. But uh, we'll be going live in just a couple of seconds. Okay, we got ready. Thumbs up there, Jordan. Yeah, you're set. live. Okay, everybody set? Okay, we're live in three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to the Talk Right Show. I'm your host, Wayne Stennett, and tonight we're going to be unpacking some information for uh, wide authors or authors who are thinking about going wide. But if you're a reader and you're just hanging out watching the show, you're welcome to hang out with us and uh, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, with us tonight is uh, Randall Wood. He is the CEO of uh, ScribeCount. It's a reporting app that uh, draws data from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, Google, uh, Overdrive, libraries, pulls it all together so you can see it all in one place. So before we unpack that, Nick, how you doing? I haven't seen, seen you in about a month. I, I'm doing good. I've I've had my, my head down and uh, been working on the Boone prequel to the deep series and that went off to my editor who who happens to be your editor uh so she's got that <laughs> in her possession today so she'll be yeah. jumping right on your yeah she's like where is it i'm like i i thought i had another week okay i'll get it to you <laughs> she's like a dynamo she does she just doesn't stop she goes from one one project right into the next one so anyway um nick why don't you uh well no i was going to do that Anyway, <laughs> welcome our guest, uh, Randall Wood. Randall and I, let's see, we've, we've known each other since, what, Nink 2019, 2018? Oh, yeah, probably before that. A few chat rooms, I'm sure. Yeah, I remember when your first book came out. I remember well, actually, talking to you about that, yeah. Going way back to the, uh, what was that website? That, that K-Boards. Board. Yeah, K-Boards. K-Boards. Yeah. That's how that's how we're dating ourselves here. We are keyboard <laughs> veterans. I still use it sometimes. Do you? I still take a look in there once in a while. But uh, your microphone suddenly is sounding real choppy, Randall. Mine is. Yeah. How about now? Yeah, still. Still. It's a yeah. bit like underwater gravelly. It was. Oh, perfect. I got it. it was before perfect before the show started. Got a new set of headphones here. I was hoping they'd be okay. My big mic isn't working. Go go to go to, get, go down there to the bottom left. Move your cursor down there to the microphone and a little arrow. Then you can choose your microphone and choose your computer's microphone over that uh, ear, earphone microphone. Maybe that. Let me try that. Will your computer audio settings? Well, for those watching, I'll I'll throw in a little thing here. Uh, one of the great things about about Scribe Count it. Uh, um, some of you have asked, like on Tropical Authors and such, how come such and such is only on Amazon? Um, well, in many cases, it's just because it's easier. <laughs> because we have one place where we get most of our sales and we just focus on that. But we're missing out on all these other places. And the difficulty is a lot of the time it's in knowing how well you're doing in all these places. Because with Amazon, you go to one place and you look, oh, I sold this much. So ScribeCount is this beautiful device 
this this program that goes out and takes things from everywhere. And then you're able to go to one big pie chart that shows you how much am I selling in Apple? How much am I selling on Kobo? How much in Barnes and Noble? Amazon's in there too. Uh, and uh, Randall, do, are you adding in now um, uh, direct sales? Is that something that has we been- We are, we are. How's my mic working? Mic's Can fine you- now. Max now? Okay, good. Um, we are up to, let's see, last count, I think we had 57 platforms. If you count uh, everywhere D2D reaches and everywhere the audio aggregators that we service reach. So we're out there quite a ways. Um, that's just sales platforms. We now, uh, we have the ad tracking through uh, Amazon and Facebook. So we're pulling that data into the system all in one dashboard. We have a uh, Email services. We started with author email. Nick Thacker helped us out there, built that up. And we're now adding, uh, we've added mail, mailer light. And per the last meeting, MailChimp is on its way very soon. Oh. So that'll that'll cover the major, major uh, there. So so you pull in your newsletter data, obviously, um, all, all that too. And you can compare that to your ads all in one platform. And then on top of that, we added direct sales. So if you've got your own WordPress site or wherever and a WooCommerce store or a Shopify store, we're pulling all your data from there as well and displaying it right alongside all of your regular sales platforms. Yeah, and that pulls a from- uh, cool feature. Yeah, I, yeah, I, that's I a big turn thing. it off when I'm recording sales because all that, all that income is right at the end of this month. So that's yeah. just- no, that's just blow money. <laughs> Direct sales are exploding. Uh, last time I went to Nink, uh, that was uh, the big number one question I got was when you add in direct sales, because that was the talk of the town that day. Uh, just everybody wanted their Shopify data. They wanted their book funnel, their book vault, their Lulu. So we added all that. Uh, the only thing we have left is uh, book vault. Uh, we're waiting on Alex is uh, sending us an API. They've been great to work with. So we're looking forward to that. And then we're in talks with uh, Lulu to add them. So should have all the bases covered there pretty soon. And uh, after that, we're going to uh, reach out to the subscription uh, platforms. We're going to add Ream. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to tell this story. Shortest conversation I ever had with a platform was Michael with Ream. Him and I passed each other at Nink maybe five or six times. And every time we did, we just kept pointing at each other, like, got to talk to you. Got to talk to you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I think we broke for lunch and him and I ended up next to each other for like the walk to the, to the, you know, the food. And I said, Mike, I don't know if you know who I am. I'm Randall. I'm from Scribe Count. And he says, Randall, the answer is yes. <laughs> I said, okay, cool. <laughs> so he knew all about me. I know all about him. And we just, uh, the hard part is carving out time to uh, get our nerds together and get that API done. But uh, looking forward to adding Ream. That's probably uh, our number one request now is to get Ream added to the system. So hopefully uh, sometime after this uh, big extension update that we're doing now, maybe uh, right around June, I'm hoping we can start working on Ream. But I got to reach out to Michael and see uh, what kind of time his guys have to, to work with us. So looking forward to that. But that, uh, that really rounds out all the uh, income streams that uh, indie authors have. Um, other than adding the smaller platforms, the more hard to reach ones, uh, we're still going to do that, of course. Uh, it's just going to take some time. And Out of curiosity. Uh, add another uh, platform it... for those really high upper level authors for speaking engagements. <laughs> speaking engagement. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they can add their income from that too if they're getting yeah. paid. But well, yeah, because yeah, there's, there's a spot for, there for other income. You just sure. Yeah, other. we got an other income and expense portal. You can put in any. You're selling books out of the back of your car. You can put that money into the Scribe Count system. It'll show up in your charts alongside all the other regular stuff. Can you make so, a category for a swag and merch? Uh, we do actually. actually all <laughs> if my you, swag uh, shows up on 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 uh, Scribe Count. Yeah, uh, we're, mm-hmm. we're adding, uh, well, if you have a Shopify store or a WooCommerce store, yeah. usually you're going through Printful or Print, 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 print something, yeah. So we're working on- uh, Printify. We, yeah, Printify, that's it. We pull in that data, but right now it's all lumped together. So we're working on a way to split that up. Most authors just go in and split it up on their own, but we, we like to automate things here. We we'll save you guys time and money. So uh, we're going to look for a way to split that out. So you can see a category, you know, you'll see store and then you'll have merch, books, all sorted by format, everything. 
And uh, as long as the data is there, we'll break it down more. So, cool. but the, the thing we're really looking forward to is the analytics now, because we've got all that data that I just mentioned. And if I can combine that with your ads that you're running, we're adding an ad flagging feature to the scheduler. So let's say Wayne's got a book bub feature deal on uh, April 2nd. He can enter that into his scheduler and push a button and it'll pop up on his charts as a vertical line. And if he hovers over that line, it'll say book bub feature deal for falling out. And then he's just got another button to push to run whatever analytic he wants. And for the analytics, for those who haven't touched those yet, we've only had them out for about a month and a half now, but you can run automated analytic reports. You don't have to do all the spreadsheet pivot table number crunching formula anymore. Uh, we got a hold of uh, uh, a guru in the business who really knows her stuff, uh, Deanna Hart. And she walked me through uh, and my nerds, uh, how to do this and automate it. So now you can go to your Scribe Count Analytics page, and all you have to choose is, I mean, make sure I get this right. Uh, you can do it by books, by series, or by ad. You just pick a date range, the platform you want to see, or all of them, um, and the format. And then it's just push a button, and it automatically creates this analytics report. And it tells you what your sell through is, what your return on investment is, what your, uh, you know, your ROI on that last ad you wrote, what, whatever you want to see. So Can you do an AB comparison. Uh, that's that is a chat that I've yeah. heard from a lot is I think Facebook ads are doing better than AMS now. And I'm like, well, I'd, <laughs> I'd like to know if that's true, but I don't You're right. know. That. Yeah, we, we are. Uh, we do have a compare charts feature. So if you make one analytic report, you'll be able to save it and then make another analytic report and then put them up and see them side by side or superimposed over each other. So you'll actually see the curve and the the, the increase rate over whatever time you want. So uh, it's, it's a really big time saver. Uh, this is something I've been looking forward to since we started this thing was uh, someday if we get all this data, man, we can start analyzing it automated. I don't have Excellent. to do, I, I am a, not an Excel guy. I do not like spreadsheets. I love so, spreadsheets. Do I, I you? will never give Some up people, my spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's people out there that say, Randall, where's the spreadsheet? And that's why we include it on every page. But I, I just am not a, a, a pivot table kind of guy. I want to just punch a few buttons and get what I want. I want it automated because I, I want to get in. I want to get the answer that I need to make that advertising decision. And I want to get back out. And that's uh, that's kind of the end goal of what that that analytics feature is. And later on, we'll be expanding it. Of course, we you know you'll be able to uh, you know drill really drill down into uh, you know right now we just have platform. You can see how your ad performed on Amazon. But if you want to see how your ad performed on Amazon in Germany, we can't really do that yet. That that takes a little more crunch in a little more code. But uh, as soon as we figure out how to do it, we'll be adding that too. Oh, do that you would, have? That'd be really um, cool. Do you have BookBub ad info? We don't yet. That's uh, I think second or third on the ad list. Um, Amazon, Facebook. I can't remember what was third now, but uh, I want to say it was an audio chirp. That's also BookBub. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'd have to I'd have to check my list, but BookBub is up there at the top. And we'll be reaching out to them pretty soon. Like we got to get this extension update done first, and then I can, I can start bugging the guys about adding more stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, they well, uh, over on over on YouTube, Bill Black, my treasure hunting buddy down in uh, Florida, he straightened me out on my microphone. I had the wrong microphone on, so now my voice sounds a little better. Yeah, I can hear you. And uh, Don Rich was asking, uh, do you report Ingram Spark? I seem to remember that it does. We do. Yeah, yeah. we report Ingram. We don't report Lightning Source. Now, if you've been in the business as long as I have, 2009, you might have a Lightning Source account. Um, we we had that on the list, and then I noticed that that list keeps keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> There's not as many Lightning Source uh, accounts out there as there used to be. So I don't know if we're going to add that or not. But we do have Ingram, Ingram Spark, and we handle all their data. 
I, I want to reach out to them and try to get those reports more often. You know, they're only quarterly right now. And it would be really nice if everybody went to a monthly a monthly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the arrears are a major headache for us. Every company has different arrears. I just wish everybody would, would, would go monthly like the rest of the world, but they don't. So it, it, it makes it a little more hard. We got to tweak formulas and adjust things. So. Now Don is, also asks, uh, what the subscription price is. I knew that was going to be subscription one of the price. Uh, hasn't changed. Uh, hasn't changed. If you're, if you're making less than a thousand bucks a month, it's only nine ninety nine. If you're making over a grand a month, it jumps up to nineteen ninety nine. And if you opt in for the uh, yearly, it's uh, one eighty five, which I believe works out to about sixteen dollars a month. So we we've, we've managed to keep the price, you know, uh, affordable for everyone. Uh, that that's the main thing I wanted to do. And uh, right now, uh, that's enough for us to cover our our server cost which explode every time we add another platform. But uh, so far we're, we're, we're keeping, uh, we're keeping up with everything. So that's, use that's right in line with other services like, like book report, which only does Amazon. Yeah. They're Amazon only. And, and what the same price, I believe 999 yeah. or, or yeah, 99 yeah. that pretty quickly when I saw what you guys had. <laughs> yeah. We have a few more well, features than they do. Report. Yeah. I, I use book report for, for, you know, quite a number of years, but uh uh, the re whole reason I started Scribe Count was I got tired of waiting for them to add more more platforms. And uh, I mean, even if you're in KU, you're still probably selling print wide because there's nothing stopping you. You should be. So, and audio, audio is huge now. Um, if you're if you're in KU, there's nothing stopping you from selling audio on all the other platforms. But I uh, still can't see that on on Book Report. So. Uh, yeah, I just got tired of waiting, and I said, I'm going to find somebody, and uh, that's what I did. Reached out through my network, found a guy who was willing to work on a startup, who knew his stuff, and we uh, launched, uh, I think it was a year and a half, two years after we, we wrote our first line of code. So, and it's just been growing ever since. So, it, it's almost almost what I envisioned, but, of course, uh new things keep happening and new stuff gets added all the time. So uh, that's the thing about technology. It's not just growing, it's growing exponentially. You and, bet. You bet. Uh, and now with AI, I mean, it's going to grow even faster. Yep. That's a bad word around here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> For certain things. Yes. Yeah. I, I look at it as more of a tool than anything else. Uh, we, we don't have any, we don't have any, uh, you know, intention to use it anywhere. I'm not sure where we even would, to be honest, haven't thought about it, but, uh, definitely out there. It's going to speed things up for a lot of people. I, I did enjoy someone posted recently like, okay, artificial intelligence is here, but what I wanted it for was I wanted it to, uh, do the laundry and the dishes. So I, <laughs> I saw that. So I, I could saw do that. art and writing. Yeah, I, I didn't want art. it to do the art and writing. So I had to go do the laundry and dishes. <laughs> yep. It's it's a good point. It's a good point. That, but. Well, I mean, Google Home. There you go. Yeah, we've got yeah. Google Home here at our house, and uh, we don't have the full on thing, but we do have cameras and all around the house and an alarm system. It's all tied into Google. Yeah, and I mean, can, I scream a question at Alexa at least twenty times a day. Yeah, don't you set know, mine off talking about her. It saves me from from you know leaving my manuscript and and jumping back in. So. I've got yeah. Alexa out in my gym, so she does everything I need out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Same here. I got it out in my shop next to the TV. All works. So we're looking at that. But uh, Well, I want to throw something out there for people uh, who who know about Scribe Count and know that you're doing this, that that's not all you do. Uh, uh, Randall Wood has the Jack Randall series. <laughs> and yeah. I took a peek at it. I'm like, book one has got 30,000 reviews. Uh, yeah. so are you still writing that or has, has Scribe Count kind of taken over? Uh, your Scribe Count took over for a few years, to be honest. Yeah, I, I kept the Jack Randall series going for well, the 10 books, I believe. Um, I have many, many outlines. <laughs> in the basement of my hard drive. So I'm really looking forward to bringing Jack back and writing some more books. Um, I actually uh, am branching out into the post-apocalyptic world right now. I had a, uh, yeah, I had an idea oh, God, a few years ago 
uh, something different. Most of the, I, I do I reading it from a certain, you know, I'm ex-military. I kind of like reading close to pocket once in a while. And uh, every book I, I read started right after the event. You know, it was always, you know, two days ago, the, you know, the plague hit or the EMP came down or the nukes landed. And now, you know, story played out. And I didn't see too many books that started like three years later or five years later. So I tried to picture what that world would be like. And I came up with an idea and I, I threw it out to a couple of the bigger names in the, in the world. I, I threw it at uh, Franklin Horton at Nink and I threw it at uh, Kyla Stone. And uh, both of them were like, yeah, you need to write that. You need to write that. So, so uh, I picked away at an outline for the last three years while I was working on scribe count. And just in the last uh, six months, I sat down and devoted a few hours a day to getting back into writing. That's and I think there's no one more happy than my wife because evidently when I don't write, Randall gets cranky. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm, you know, back to staring out the window at nothing and, you know, uh, what, honey, did you say something? And she's like, Oh, he's writing a book again. So I'm back to my old self. Whereas a uh, scribe count is very technical and, and, you know, I got to troubleshoot. I got to teach myself a lot of things because these, uh, I actually had to buy a book. I wish I could reach it right now, but it's how to talk to your developer, <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, it should have been called how to speak nerd. Cause I did not know all this technical jargon and everything. And they're throwing stuff at me. Like, well, you, do you want to do it this way or that way? And I'm just going, yeah, uh-huh. I don't understand. What you're talking about. <laughs> so I have had to teach myself the world of uh, startups and uh, software development. And uh, it's been a, um, a shake and bake course. I mean, I had a, I'm in the deep end and only in the last, I, I could probably sit down with a developer now and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and hold my own. But uh, I still, every day something comes at me that I have to look up or educate myself on. And that eats up a lot of time. So I'm trying to just uh, scribe count until noon every day and then uh, write a book until my wife gets home from work. So that's my new schedule. <laughs> that works. Yeah. Yeah. It's working so far. I hope to have yep. book three here done pretty soon and I'll get them all up and start shoving them out the door. Got to keep oh, mama happy. You've already got, <laughs> you're going to do a rapid release on them. Yeah, I'm. Uh, let's see. Uh, they're, they're, they run about eighty to ninety thousand words a piece, and I think I'm forty some thousand into book three. Oh, nice! And got one all formatted and cover art done. Number two has got cover art, a little, little editing, and uh, that'll be ready for formatting. And uh, yeah, so I'm hoping to get it done there uh, by end of this month. Get a new series out. Give Jack a run for his money. Oh, that's but, uh, fantastic! Yeah, looking forward to that. I look forward to the time that I, I'm still narrating a lot of audiobooks on top of trying to get the books out. Uh, I haven't done a rapid release yet, but I really want to do that. But I imagine that needs to be a new series. Like, there's no point in rapid releasing. That's what I'm series. told. To. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been out of it for, what, three, almost four years now. So later this month, I'm going to prove that wrong, Nick. Oh, well. I'll be doing a rapid release into KU. Oh, yes. 40 books, yes. one week apart. You're pulling everything from wide and going back to KU? For one KU period. So they'll come out, they'll come out of wide, go into KU one week apart. Then they'll come out of KU and go back wide one week apart. Oh, won't you? So Randall, your... you're not going to be able to write uh, when that happens. You're going to have to uh, get a scribe <laughs> count. To, to deal with what Wayne's doing. Yep. I'll have to assign a nerd just to Wayne. That's that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that'll happen. But oh, I'm surprised you're doing that, Wayne. Uh, don't you lose well, all your a lot of your data from the from the wide platforms though? No, they're just they're just unpublished. When they republish, they'll go right back to where they were with the same reviews and everything. Okay. But, uh, I've been noticing that with my last, so I release new books into KU for mm -hmm. for a single ninety day period, and then they go wide. And I brought my books out of KU one at a time, very slowly over a year. And I think it took over a year. I and remember you doing that. So yeah. my, In fact, I my point KU a lot audience of stayed with me all the way through. I, I was pulling them out slower than they were reading them. So uh -huh. by the time I had them all pulled out, 
except for the latest release, my new releases consistently get at least two bonuses, bonus for the nice. first and second month, sometimes on the third month. But lately it's been not getting the third month and the page reads are starting to drop down. So over 27 volume series, you're going to lose people. So sure. Sure. By doing Bonuses this, by jumping back into KU the and then back out again, I'll pull in a whole bunch of new readers from KU and more for the, more for the visibility than the income. Okay. It's, it's not an income producer. I don't think. Well, I'm doing the roughly the same thing with my post apoc Everybody tells me those readers are KU readers. So I plan to follow your lead there and, and drop them into KU for at least three, maybe six months before I pull them and go and walk and go wide with them. Okay. The Don, has I'm asked, writing... Don has asked a great question. Don Rich okay. is one of our tropical authors. And I know this is just going to floor him, but he asks, uh, how long does it take scribe count to set up on, on his computer? Well, if you'd asked me that two years ago, Don, I would have said about 10, 15 minutes, but since we've added so many features, over the last couple of years, if you're going to use all those, it depends on how much data you have to pull. Um, if you have a library like Wayne's, uh, it's going to take over a half hour for us to pull all of your data, maybe even more. Because uh, like I said, the, the platforms have these safety features and they don't let us pull giant chunks of information. They feed it to you. You know, I, I I tell them I want this pizza, and they say, "Okay, you can have it a slice at a time," and it's going to take a day. <laughs> uh, it all depends. If you're using all the platforms, it can take a half hour to an hour to load all that data. If you're just Amazon only, I could probably have you up and running in 15, 20 minutes. Now, if you add your email platform, that's more time. If you add your uh, direct sales, that's that's more download time. But the good thing is, if you sign up and you just get that process started and then leave it running, it'll just keep loading and loading and loading until it's done. That's exactly and once it's what all I loaded. Do. Yeah. Once it's all loaded, there's no reason to turn it off. Really. It's very safe. You have complete control over it at any time. And from that point forward, we update it every half hour. So all the software does after it's loaded, all your back data is look for new data. So every half hour, it, it, it just scans again to see if there's anything new. And if there is, it grabs it and loads it into your dashboard. Yeah, that's one so, of the biggest uh, complaints that people have had when I tell them about ScribeCount is, uh, well, I, then I have to sign into Amazon, sign into Barnes & Noble, sign into Apple, Google, draft to Yeah, you do the, in, initially. But if you just leave it running in the background, you don't have to do that but one Except one, Apple. You got to sign Apple, in to Apple yeah. every six hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that has to do with their safety features. That's yeah. not us. But uh, like uh, if, if you ever go to your bank account and you sign in and then you forget to sign out, it kicks you out after after mm -hmm. like 20 minutes, right? If it doesn't see you moving a cursor or clicking on anything, it says we're shutting you down for safety reasons. You know, we don't want anybody hacking into your account. Well, all of these platforms have very similar safety features. They just have different timers. So we might log into Amazon and that link will stay good for five, six, seven days. And then all of a sudden it'll disconnect you. And to reconnect it, all you gotta do is hit that sync button on your settings page and it'll reconnect and it'll pick up right where it left off and it'll load everything that, that uh, it missed when it logged out, when Amazon logged you out. Now, some of the companies have very, very short fuses. And Apple being the, the 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 prime example, Apple will kick you out just about every day. If oh, yeah. they don't see you in there moving around, clicking anything, they kick you out. And most mornings, I I myself have to go into my settings page and click on the Apple link. It links up in a matter of a minute or two, and then starts loading the data that you know it, that it lost overnight when it logged me out. So it's a minor inconvenience, but it's a safety measure, and it's a good one. Um, we actually applaud it. Uh, this is not something, even if I got an API from Apple, I might be tempted to say, Hey, can you extend that two day timer to maybe a week? But I would never, ever ask them to get rid of it. Even if we had an API that was rock solid and they, we were a very trusted source. It's just a, a very good safety mechanism that keeps all of us. Yeah, I mean, safe. the amount of yeah. time you, you go down, you got six, I think I have seven 
uh, seven platforms. Mm-hmm. Click, click the uh, sign in button. It automatically signs me in because it knows who I am. Click the next one. It automatically signs me in all the way through. Takes two, maybe three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Max. That's what I do. I go in and I click anything that uh, disconnected overnight. And then I go, uh, you know, look at other stuff while it's loading. So there, there's uh, I have a question. Of, uh, what does sure. API stand for? What does API stand for? Jordy? <laughs> I don't know. Huh? What? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, 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 You're asking it's, mega corporations yeah. if you want well, to. Well, an, an API is, Key? is a... It's a connection exclusively for Scribe Count. Alpha. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, if I go to, let's say, Amazon, I say, Amazon, you know, could you write an API, which is nothing but a string of code for Scribe Count that gives us access to this data? And we give them a list of the data that we want to pull from them. And they do that. And now we've got our own backdoor into Amazon where we're not going to the public page and pulling data. We're going in the back door and we're getting the data directly from the source. Got it. And there's two advantages to that. One, it's a much, much more secure and an accurate form of communication between our two systems. And two, Amazon has total control over, over what we're doing. You know, they, mm-hmm. they can monitor us and see that we're not doing anything nefarious. So it's a, it, it's a much more secure, um, accurate, and uh, just all, all around safer way for our two companies to communicate. And it's an application programming interface. That's it. I knew. Bill, <laughs> Bill Black came up with the answer just a minute ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other question. Uh, sure. How does Scribe count, count deal with uh, two-factor authentic- authentication? We don't uh, deal with that at all. Uh, we don't use your passwords. We don't use cookies. We don't use any of oh. the, the sign-in process. So it, it's hard to explain in, in layman's terms. The best thing I'll come up with is it's like a hallway. Okay, let's say you've got a hallway and in this hallway are doors and each one of these doors is one of your platforms. So there's an Amazon door and there's an Apple door and there's a you know a Google door. And I, you invite me over to make a dashboard for you, okay? And you're walking me down this hallway, you open up the door and I can look inside and I can see your Amazon data inside that that room, right? But your hand's on the door and you can shut it anytime you want. You're the only one who's got the keys to it and I can't go in and touch anything. I can only see. That's the way Scribe Count works. So, so it... If I had Scribe Count and I have my KDP Amazon account, but I also have the Nick Sullivan who has to log out and log in as Nick Sullivan, the guy who buys dog food, right. will that cut you off from your ability to see? No. Okay. As long as it, when you hit that that login button on your settings page at Scribe Count, it takes you to your sign in for whatever platform that is. Okay. You complete the sign in process. And when you're done, our software sees, hey, the door's open. We can see data now. Oh. So it's just kind of, I took one of my nerds and I stationed him in front of that door that you just opened. And his job is to do nothing but report on what he sees inside that room. But you can come along anytime you want and shut that door. And he can't go in. He can't he go can't in. Make any he can't change. touch anything. We can't change anything. We don't see anything except your your sales data, we don't see any banking information or anything like that. I can't go in and, and change your manuscript or anything. We don't have that kind of access. And if we did, Amazon would cut us off in a heartbeat. So yeah, not going to happen. And the other thing is, if, if, if you want my nerd to stop reporting or to forget everything that he saw, delete my data button that Wayne's used. It dumps everything from our system and it makes like, we never even knew you. Hmm. So everything is and just then gone. It takes about 20, 15 or 20 minutes for it all to load back up. Yep. Sign back up or yeah, even longer if you've been at it for a long time. So it's really a, a three, it, it's a three person connection there. It's between scribe count, your computer and whatever platform. And any three of those people can sever that connection at any time. 
So very, very safe the way we set it up. Uh, okay. Don's asking, uh, describe count pull old data for old comparison. Data? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I've been publishing since 2009 and it pulls all my data going all the way back. Yeah. Mine goes all the way back to, it shows 20, 2013, but 2014 was so much more that 2013, you can move the okay. cursor around. It won't show up. Any <laughs> Drowns it out. I made Mine's $23 the dollars that year. And the next year I made, <laughs> uh for over twenty thousand. So my mine starts at my first book bub. It ramped up and then it went plateaued for a long time and then I got a book bub and it spiked up. Yeah, I remember that day very well. <laughs> Fifty but, south fifty seven thousand in one day. We're in overtime right now, but before right. we get, before yeah. we finish this up, what's coming in the future? What 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 what's is the coming? Next, what is what's the next feature deck? that's really going to be hot? I think the next thing, it all depends because I have different teams working on different things and whoever gets done with the next thing first, that's what's happening. I think MailChimp will probably be the next thing that you see go live. After that, um, probably royalty splits. We're working on a royalty split feature that'll be part of the uh, bookshelf page. So if you've written a book with another author, you can go in there and it'll have settings where you can split up the income of that book and for and individual books, individual books, series, oh, box sets. Um, the box sets things are hard because sometimes you got you know, 13 people in one box set, you know, and on multiple platforms and different prices and that that's going to be complicated, but yeah, this is going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Royalty split Ooh, is something that would uh, be, we've wanted for yeah, a while. I have, I have two co-authors and I have to go in and look at each book each book's data from seven different platforms, add all those together to figure out yep. half, half of that goes to this person, go to these other books and half of that goes to this person. That'd be a yeah. really cool feature. Now, how much time a week do you spend on that? You know, that's uh, once a month, probably half an hour. Okay. So it'll it's, add up. It's, yeah. I, I've, I value my time at two fifty an hour. So it costs me $125 to do it. And if you can do it in 10 seconds, Boom. You just saved yeah. me 125 we'll bucks. Be, we'll be doing it for you. <laughs> It'll be sitting there waiting for you. The other thing is ghostwriters. A lot of people have ghostwriters that they split income with. You'll be able to do that as well. So, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be a good tool, a good tool. Yeah. And, um, what else are we look working on? Um, uh, what about that feature I was asking about? Which one's that? Able to predict income. Predict yeah. income. We have to redo the payments page first. Amazon uh, pays two months after. Yep. Apple pays one month after. Google pays six weeks after. Kobo pays six weeks after. Mm -hmm. So it would be really cool if I could see, pull up, how much am I going to get paid at the end of April? Yep. Well, I already you know can, what Amazon's going to be because it's right. two months ago. <laughs> if you can picture it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that payments page and I'm going to split it into two. So you're going to have a side-by-side -side and every month is going to have what I call a one sheet report. You know, you remember in the army, we always made one sheeters. Remember, mm -hmm. had to get it all on one page, or you, you were you, you were replaceable. But anyway, this will be half the page will be money you earned in January, and the other half will be money that you got paid in January. So instead of lumping it together and trying to figure it out, you'll be able to just pick which which uh, report you want to see. And it'll give you that one. Oh, uh oh, somebody you froze. Yeah. If you can still hear, you froze up. You froze. <laughs> one page well, and the oh, same. Back. It'll take data. You froze up there for a second. <laughs> All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, it says my connection's unstable. Should be. Yeah, I'm back now. It says. You hear me? Yeah. Yes. No? You hear me now? We're okay. at 709. Uh, do you have any more questions there, uh, Wayne? Um, let's see. There's been a whole lot of chit chat. We've got a lot of people watching. I don't mind going over. I got time. Let's see. Don Ritz says. I'm going to go turn on my can... oven and I'll be right back. Okay. Don Rich is asking, what's Clavio? Clavio. Clavio is a, a, is a unique animal. Um, we've been looking into it. 
It's both an email service, Wayne, and it's kind of a it's kind of an analysis tool. Uh, I, I don't know the words to describe it, but uh, it is unique. We are looking at it. I'm not sure exactly how we would implement it. It's mm -hmm. one of those things that uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge because it's 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 just unique. I, I really can't compare it to anything else out there. Uh, we need to build up the email platforms themselves first. That's why we're adding your MailChimp, uh, your Constant Contact, your, you know, the, the, the bigger ones. And then uh, once we have the majors, I'll call them covered, then we'll look at adding Clavio. And I know Clavio is important to a lot of people that are selling direct, especially through Shopify. Uh, Morgana Best is a huge fan of Clavio. So were a lot of people I met at Nink. And uh, I really want to add it. I just don't know how yet. So everybody give me a little time to figure it out. And uh, once I, I get on the same page and I convince the nerds that we can do it, uh, we'll do it. But um, that's going to be a while. Uh, that and, leads and right into the last question. Don's asking if you're going to be at Nink. I already know the answer. Are you going to be presenting at Nink? Uh, probably. Yeah, I live right down the street, practically. I'm, I'm in Sarasota, so... Uh, I just, you know, it, it's nothing but an hour drive for me. So, yeah, I'll definitely be at Nink. It's right in my backyard and uh, probably be uh, presenting. And uh, there's a lot to cover, though, and you only get an hour. So I'll see what I can do. <laughs> but Nink's a long way away. Uh, we'll, we'll, we got a lot to cover, a lot to it's do before. Not as uh, long as you think. It's getting closer. <laughs> yeah, September's coming up quick. But uh, Registration's yeah, just about, oh, by the way, Jordan, registration open for assistance today. So we'll oh, I got to do that. Too. Yeah, I got to do that too. Yep. I got a few industry guests I'm bringing with me too. So. All right. Well, Nick, do you have anything else? No, I'm, I am good to go. All good. All right. All right. Well, uh, we'll go ahead and close the show. I want to thank you for being on here with us, Randall, and thank everybody for watching. Uh, thanks to our supporters, uh, Down Island Press, Aurora Publicity, um, scribe scribe count of course yeah of course yeah yeah <laughs> and uh pirate radio who am i forgetting i always forget how not to sail and how not to authors. sail and tropical authors <laughs> I, I, I swear every time i do this I, I i tell myself i'm gonna get a little sticky pad and put it right here on my computer screen and so i get everything and I forget. <laughs> yep, yep. I do the same. I got three screens here and I still forget stuff all the time. So all right, well, thanks for that, having me, Wayne. Thanks for thanks. being on here with us, Randall. Any, anytime. It's, it's always great talking to you and uh, pass the word along to the nerds that uh, they're doing great work. <laughs> Will do. Will do. They love that. All right. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night.